One of Belize's heroes and trailblazers has been laid to rest. Dr. Damonita Gordon was given a four-hour send-off today with the highest honors afforded in Belize. After receiving a military welcome at the Philip Goldson International Airport on January 18, and after ceremoniously brought to her former residence on Regent Street to Lane State on January 19, the 90-year-old educator, ambassador, and England's representative in Belize was taken to her final resting place at the Lord Ridge Cemetery. The Bear Party, along with the Firing Party and the Sword Party of the Belize Defence Force, stood ready at a quarter past nine this morning at the base of the Swing Bridge to carry the procession to the Cathedral of St. John the Baptist. At 9.30, church bells were heard tolling in unison across the country as a reminder of the loss of Belize's first Governor-General. Once inside the cathedral at 10 o'clock, the funeral mass began with addresses from several leaders, including the leader of the opposition, Patrick Faber. It would be remiss of me not to comment on her work as an educator. I pay tribute to her and place on record on behalf of our entire education system and on behalf of all my colleague ministers of education, past and present our deepest gratitude to her for her contributions to our children and their teachers. It is interesting to note that she was a pioneer in qualifying herself for the classroom and qualifying herself to train teachers. She had the opportunity to share what she knew with young teachers who were in training, and she reached the highest point of becoming an education officer. I'm especially intrigued in her passion for education psychology. Trained educator myself, I have taken a few courses in ed psych, and oh, what a fascinating world it is. When you understand what makes a child tick, what prospers his or her learning and development, or sometimes more importantly, what hinders such progress, it's most exhilarating. I could only imagine what a joy her pioneering years brought to her in that early time. She had an exemplary life in education. She had an exemplary life being there for our children. All that she accomplished long before she was made our first governor general or bestowed any of her dames. Prime Minister John Brasenio also paid tribute to Dr. Damonita speaking of her career outside the office of the Governor-General and the impact she had on young people. Elmira Minita Gordon was a decorated Belizean woman. She was promoted to both Dame Grand Cross of the Order of St. Michael and St. George, GCMG, and Dame Grand Cross of the Royal Victorian Order, GCVO. She was a part of an exclusive group of double dames. But I'm sure if you speak to her family, they will tell you that she was equally proud of the title of District Commissioner of the Girl Guides for the Belize District. Of her own appointment as Justice of the Peace and Senior Justice of the Peace. Her lifetime membership of the Red Cross, the British Red Cross, her work as a member of the National Library Service Board the St. Hilda's College Board of Governors, Deputy Chairperson of the Domestic Wages Council of the YWCA, and a member of the Educational Psychology Program Planning Committee. The sum total of all is that De Minita served us well as the first Governor General of Belize, a job she executed with excellence and grace. So today we honor her. We pay tribute to her lifetime of work, dedication, and sacrifice to our beloved nation. Chief celebrant of the funeral service was the Right Reverend Bishop Philip Wright of the Anglican Church. St. Paul reminds us that all this treasure, all this beauty, all that gives humanity its rightful place in the order of creation is housed in fragile clay jars. 
that can be easily broken. Even so, these clay jars can suddenly fall from our sometimes careless hands and be shattered, destroyed, and lost for good. This alone ought to convey to us the importance of humility and temperance. It rings a sober reminder that in the midst of life, we are in debt, that our physical flesh is but ashes, and that our larger and truer self that ultimately lives on in eternity with God and for the time being in the memories and hearts of our families and friends. Her send-off by one of her surviving siblings, Kalora Franklin, was a testament to the positive influence and stellar character of Dr. De Manita. In 1986, the University of Victoria in British Columbia awarded an honorary Doctors of Laws uh, degree to De Benita for devotion and advancement of man. A second Doctors of Laws, honoris causa, was conferred upon her by the University of Birmingham for being a person distinguished in eminence and attainment. The Belize City Council presented her with the Outstanding Citizenship Award for efficient and dedicated service to the people of Belize. In recognition of her impressive achievements, Dame Minita is included in publications such as The Who is Who in the Commonwealth, Who is Who of Intellectuals, Who is Who of Professional and Business Women, Who is Who in Latin America, The International Yearbook and State Statesman's Who is Who, and Marquis, who is who? When the service concluded, the military took the lead and a procession was led to the Lord Ridge Cemetery. By 1.30 in the afternoon, De Manita was in her final resting place. Many lined the streets to bid her farewell, including students, girl guides, and scouts. Reporting for Love News, I am Renee Trujillo.